All right, today we're gonna make a cal panel delete plate. And I actually traced this from an existing cal panel uh, that my friend Bill Wilner let me borrow. Bill actually owns Miata Roadster, so if you guys need car parts, visit miataroadster.com and you could just pretty much buy anything that you want. He carries JDM goods, USDM goods, expensive goods, cheap goods, pretty much anything for your Miata. So, hey, let me borrow this cowl panel delete plate. I made some changes that uh, I think will work well for my setup, like the uh, holes for the HVAC and like wipers and stuff like that I deleted because I don't need it. So um, there's really no way to make a template without actually um, having the piece and tracing it, or you could actually use index cards and then you just tape it all over your cal panel and then you could make a template that way. But he saved me a lot of time by doing it this way. Here's what we're using. Our typical jigsaw with a 6, 18 to 21 TPI uh, blade, some clamps, drill, orbital sander with miscellaneous uh, sanding grit, 80, 220, and 320. Mask because of COVID and <laughs> also dust, really dust. I don't care about coronavirus, to be honest. And then uh, drill bits and random stuff over there and a table. So let's get this started. I'm gonna whip out the GoPro again, put it on my head and then uh, cut this out. Should be pretty easy. All right, here we go. I'm gonna clamp this guy down, make sure it doesn't move. I'm gonna cut this piece out first and then do the rest. So I'm gonna clamp this down closer to the table. These clamps are super cheap, by the way. I got these from Home Depot. Freaking useful. All right. Now this stuff is called Alupoly ACM. ACM basically stands for aluminum composite material and you can get it from um, Piedmont Plastics. So right here, Piedmont Plastics. So if someone asks me where to get this stuff, <laughs> I'll be surprised, but also not surprised because anytime I mention something, it goes over people's heads and then they just totally forget. Right, so got our jigsaw, the uh, blade here. This is a 18 to, oh, 17 to 24. Yeah, that's pretty close. All right, and I like to do this, make a little loop-de-loop -loop so you don't pull the, uh, the power cord off while you're working. There you go. Hopefully it's not on. Okay, good. We are ready. I haven't shaved in days because of coronavirus. All right, here we go. Next, we're gonna drill these holes out. Ooh, that thing bit. Right, we're done. There's the first draft. Now all we have to do is test fit it first before we finalize everything. If we finalize everything now, uh, we might need to make holes bigger or uh, uh, cut, you know, certain areas that doesn't fit. So uh, you wanna make sure that you test fit it first before you finalize the product. And there you go. Using the uh, fine grit sandpaper, really cleans up the edges right there as you can see. And uh, just the best thing to do is kind of just look down the end, through end, and then you can see if you have any waves. So we're gonna test fit this and see how it looks. 
boom, there you go, installed. So, like I said, don't finalize it until you're for sure, for sure that you're done. So right here in the corner, I need to cut that out a little bit. Not the panel itself, but the, uh, the cowl panel, the plastic piece, the black. I need to make a little notch right there so it fits. These big holes right here, I need to make them slightly bigger because um, these nuts right here, that's what goes into them. I wanna give them a little bit more space to play with. But other than that, everything seems to fit pretty damn good. Uh, I did notice that the holes are not exactly aligned, but I think it's because I still need to drill out the, uh, the existing hole on the, the firewall itself where the, uh, the uh, weather stripping used to mount. So I need to cut that out or cut that out. Make it bigger because the uh, bolts that we're using is a quarter inch or six mil. And those holes right there right now are M5s, I think. And uh, I wanna use M6s or maybe I use an M5, but it doesn't matter. The idea is to make them big enough so we could slide the rivet nuts through and then we can expand it with the tool after. Right, so th this is pretty simple. You just measure the, uh, the drill bit size, make sure it's big enough to fit the rev nut. And I'm using a unit bit here so I don't have to switch bits every two seconds. And then I got microfibers, like used ones, to catch the uh, shavings because you don't want this stuff in your engine bay. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install our rib nuts. Watch episode, rib nut install, blah, blah, blah. If you wanna know how this is done. All right, so we got our rib nut in there. Now we're gonna insert it in here. Now you wanna make sure that this rib nut hole is just big enough for your rib nut. A little play is okay, but you, you don't want too much. Cause you have too much play, you're gonna have issues later. Oh shit. See that, I crushed it before I even inserted it. <laughs> so I got spares. Make sure you go in straight. You don't wanna put these things sideways. So crush. Turn it in. There you go. You don't wanna over tighten these because you could pull off the threads and you could buy this rib nut tool from Amazon. It literally is called rib nut setter. Next thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we dry fit this before we finalize, finalize everything. That way, if we need to make changes, we can make changes ASAP. The corner right here, you need to take out one of the fender bolts. Okay. This installs by putting the top one in first and down. And over here, you can see this corner over here. I actually had to trim the plastic cowl panel to clear that area. So uh, if you have issues fitting that side, you might need to trim your stock cowl panel. I'm using M5 1.0s. Okay. Right. Looks like I need to go in a little bit more. One reason why it took me forever to do my diffuser is I had to test fit, remove, test fit, remove, test fit, remove, test fit, remove. And uh, that's the only way to do it properly. If you don't test fit, you're never gonna know if it's gonna fit right the first time. Like right here. This is kinda tight on this bolt, but I think we're okay. And this is why you made or you made. This is why you make the bolts, the bolt holes a little bit bigger 
and not exact exact because not every car is the same. And if you make it too tight, then you can't put in the bolts if you have variants. See like here, it's perfect, but on the other side, it was kind of sloppy. And over here, you put in the stock bolts for the fender. And depending on how much space I have left, I might use a spacer on here to kind of space it out a little bit. But in my case, I might need longer bolts on the corners. But other than that, it looks pretty good. The next thing we're gonna do is we gotta close the hood and then make sure that these two nuts fit down here. So come over here, I'll show you what I mean. So when we close that hood, this thing needs to house the two nuts. So we're gonna close it and see how close we get. Here we go. Zoom in, get closer in there. Yeah, low, see that? So it fits right in there, pretty good, boom. And then the, uh, the cowl panel right here, this plastic piece, it's white right there because I actually trimmed it. If you don't trim it, it might hit uh, or it might not, it doesn't matter. But I'm missing the fender here so I can't really fully bolt this, but it looks like it's gonna clear okay. So now we take it all apart and then we uh, wrap it. We're just gonna wrap it the same gray over here that we use for the splitter and for the diffuser. Kind of give it a little bit of contrast because I don't want to make it all red because if I did red, it would look kind of gaudy. And if I did black, it's kind of plain. And I like the gray, breaks up the engine bay a little bit. But as you can see right there, it looks pretty damn clean. And I saved some money by doing it myself. Mm -hmm. 